Hey everyone, this is Molly Graves Pryor again with another race commentary video. This time returning to the Trooper David Brinkeroff Memorial Race Series in Coxsackie, New York on April 23rd. As you can see, this is actually a super short one this time around. And uh, as you probably saw, uh, we opened with a little teaser from the end sprint. I hope that whetted your appetite for uh, the remainder of the video. So this is the second and final race in the series. And if you caught my video covering the first one on April 9th, you'll notice how much warmer and drier it is in comparison. You'll also notice that uh, I'm only sporting the front camera footage this time around. So, you know, for whatever reason, my cameras just have not wanted to function properly at the Trooper uh, races. In the first race, it was only the rear cam. So I'm pretty grateful that, you know, I'm able to share uh, the full front cam footage with you this time around. So with that said, uh, all in all, you know, this was just a fun race to be in. Um, there were several attempts to get into breaks. Um, one attempt actually, uh, we, I think it was like a group of five of us, um, and we actually thought that it might stick um, until it didn't, <laughs> about halfway through the final lap. Um, and as you'll see coming through here, there were definitely some uh, end race attacks, there were counters, and uh, a couple of spots where there was just on, like, on the course craziness uh, before we ended up getting to the final sprint in a few minutes. Um, the final sprint that you saw a preview of at the beginning. So with that, we're gonna get right into things. Um, so just a couple of uh, uh, quick pointers. Um, one thing about this is that there is a very strict uh, double yellow uh, rule in effect. And so uh, basically, not, not from the sense of like, okay, if you cross it for like, you know, a second and you come back, it's more like, you know, no passing in the double yellow, um, things along those lines, basically. Because as you can see, there's a lot of curves um, on the course and you don't want to take a chance that you're trying to pass and you're going out and then boom, a car is coming in the opposite direction. So, um, you know, basically the roads are really, really narrow. So that means at best you can get about three across. Um, so that just made coming into the final stretch super, super intense um, for all of us. And so you can see here, uh, there was actually an attempt by someone to kind of get, uh, you know, get an advantage. And so they put in an attack and then other people were countering. So here, you know, I'm just coming up over a little riser and I'm seeing, you know, a couple of people going off, but I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna go with that yet because we still have a good ways to go before, uh, before we hit the finish. And we also, as you can see from the wind arrows, we've got a straight headwind. So I'm like, I'm definitely not gonna try and put myself out there. But once I saw, you know, now this fifth person go, um, you know, I think this is a guy from CW Factory, but I was close enough to him where I could kind of like get in his wake and then and then keep going. Uh, and I just looked at this and I was like, okay, right, there's no way I'm gonna let, um, you know, four or five guys get up the road uh, without me being there to bridge across. So, you know, I'm, I'm basically pain caving it at this point. We're like 48 miles into the race and I'm doing, you know, 450 to 550 watts. I'm in the mid 170s. Uh, just doing everything I can to, you know, close this gap and, and, and get on them. And so uh, I was actually looking back while I made that bridge effort just to see, you know, did I have a gap, um, you know, and is it at all possible to uh, maybe potentially get away with this group? And I actually did have a pretty big gap, but as you can imagine, the rest of the field uh, also saw this and their, you know, danger flags are going off and so they were able to bridge up. Um, so, you know, that was just one of the examples where I was talking about, you know, counters, attacks and counterattacks going off. Um, but you probably also saw, you know, the, the pace motorcycle on the left and then there was a car that was kind of hanging out in front of us. Um, that car was actually not part of the race. It was just a civilian who was on the race course at the time, but they were also just hanging out on the course. They weren't really driving. And so it was, you know, kind of a dangerous situation. Uh, so thankfully in this particular case, the, the pace motorcycle was able to go up 
um, and try and you know get them off the road. The only problem is um, they got them off the road, but I think just as you're about to see coming up through here, uh, we had a guy that actually ended up passing on the double yellow, but just as that was happening, that car decided they were going to just park with the car's butt right in the middle of the road and just stop. Um, and so we were just like, <laughs> we, I think everyone at the Peloton at this particular point, given the speeds that we were doing, it, like we were all just starting to like panic a little bit. We were like just screaming, you know, car, car, car. Um, so that was just one of those situations that just made, uh, you know, this end stage of the race even more dynamic. Um, coming up right here, uh, this was another case of the craziness. You just saw uh, another racer who, you know, was uh, trying to ride the, the, you know, the, the, the white line a little bit too closely and ended up double flatting on the side and blowing out both of his tires. You didn't hear him, but he actually said at that particular moment, he was like, oh man. And I, I was just like, oh, I know that pain. That, that really sucks. But again, this is just one of those situations where, you know, you're dealing with really narrow roads. Uh, you know, at the, the field is just, as you can see, the field is very antsy. Everyone is taking the slightest bit of daylight that they've got uh, to try and get an advantage and move up ahead uh, and trying to avoid uh, going over that, that double yellow. And so, you know, we're coming up through here to the last uh, final, you know, little bit of a riser. Uh, and you can see I'm, you know, digging in, I'm over 700 watts, trying to get it, trying to get up and over with the crew. Uh, I saw a couple of people passing on the left. And so I'm doing everything that I can to get out into that left corner, because that's the only place that I can, uh, you know, pass. And you actually see right here, I'm actually well aware that I'm riding the knife's edge of, uh, of the the double yellow and just you know not passing in the double yellow but just making sure that i stay right on the line and just hoping beyond hope that there's a little bit of daylight and just as i was like okay things are maybe not going to go the way that i had hoped they opened up just enough lonely hearts and uh uh you know cw factory racing uh they were able to kind of get a little bit of a daylight on the left hand side and so, you know, we're literally coming in, I think it, this might be maybe like a, a half mile to go or so, or three quarters of a mile to go. And so we're all, uh, you know, looking up ahead and way off in the distance, actually, um, that is actually uh, a solo rider who had uh, broken away. And so, you know, we're looking at this and kind of looking around and saying, okay, is anyone gonna try and close that down? But this close to the finish line, no one is trying to sacrifice uh, their sprint, um, you know, or you know their legs or anything along those lines to get that in. So you can see right here, people are jostling. You know, <laughs> the the double line uh, is in effect, but now people are starting to take like a ton of risks. Um, you know, risks that. I'm like, okay guys, oh my God, I hope, I hope, I hope no one causes any particular, uh, any particular type of crash. And then you can see right here, there's a guy in the you know, green and black who got really impatient and decided, yeah, YOLO, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna damn the rules to hell and pass you know, over the line. Um, and in real time, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, this is insanity. Because we're also, you know, well over 30 miles an hour at this point. Um, so if there's at any point, uh, any type of, uh, uh, any type of miscalculation, we're done. So I'm gonna pause here and just let you watch the sprint in real time.
So you just saw uh, the sprint and I wanted to include this photo. I don't know who took it, but kudos. You know, that's uh, Peter who said, woo <laughs> and won. And see, that's me uh, in the sprint. Um, but what I wanted to do here is actually go back to the sprint itself because you probably, you know, heard some expletives uh, from me. And what happened, we're gonna watch this in slow motion. What happened is that I'm keeping a straight line uh, and not deviating uh, from my path in the sprint. And I actually felt, uh, you know, this rider coming up behind me. And the reason is because he was actually putting his, uh, his shoulders into my hip and pushing me off to the side and basically used the remainder of his hips to just bulldoze away through. So what you can see coming up through here, and we're going to freeze frame right here, uh, the people basically on the left hand side, you can't see it, but if I had had my rear camera, they see actually that there was another cyclist to my left who I got bumped into and almost did a header into the grass. So we're gonna pick the, the, uh, the race back up again in slow motion. And so, yeah, as you can see, they're getting out of the way because they don't know what's coming. My power is dropping because now I'm looking at doing a straight header at you know, 30 miles an hour into the car uh, in front of us. So I'm just basically trying to you know, course correct as much as quickly as possible, get myself back online. Uh, once I was assured that you know I was going to be okay and be able to pass through, and you can see this was literally like maybe a few inches. I just applied you know power again just to make sure that uh, you know I could just finish strongly. Um, but the reason why I wanted to show this uh, is because you know when you are sprinting, you just have to be really careful that um, you know you don't put other people in danger. You know, don't try to force lines uh, that you don't have, um, you know, and in this case, you know, I, I actually spoke to the guy after the race and I was like, yo, man, that, that wasn't cool. You know, you almost like took me out and, and the other guys that were next to me. And he actually apologized. He was like, you know what, I, I was in such a pain cave. I, I honestly wasn't even paying attention that much. So all in all, uh, same thing that I told him, you know, we were able to stay upright. So no harm, no foul. Uh, but again, that's just one of the things uh, that you have to watch out for. So as I said, this is a short one. Um, you know, you got a chance to see me sprint. I've actually been working on that and trying to, you know, get better at sprinting. Uh, I'm still nowhere close to, you know, people like Peter who, you know, I think he came from like sixth place or fifth or uh, seventh or sixth or something like that and sprinted and, and won the field sprint. Um, I ended up coming in 10th uh, uh, and uh, he got second. So again, congratulations, Peter, on the day. Um, so I just wanted to thank you all for uh, you know, taking the time to come back and continue to watch uh, you know, these uh, race analysis videos. We have plenty more on the way. Uh, races from CRCA, I'm doing Ken Harrod uh, Memorial Road Race this Saturday and Killington Stage Race is coming up, Dave Jordan, Tour of the Hill Towns, and on and on and on uh, throughout the summer. So if you enjoyed these videos, uh, please like, uh, leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you as always. Bye-bye.